South Park The Stick of Truth, the RPG based off of the show South Park. For those of you that don't know what South Park is, Who are you people? South Park is a cartoon on Comedy Central which is very satirical and very critical of a lot of what society does and when they talk about it they do not hold back. A lot of the comedy within South Park is very much rude and crude but when they do make some really good points they make really good points so does South Park the stick of truth feel like a South Park game yes it really does it even looks like the show if you look at it closely you might have trouble uh, figuring out if you're looking at the show or if you're actually playing the game which is actually pretty cool the story in the stick of truth is about you the new kid on the block and almost immediately you are conscripted into Cartman's humans of the kingdom of Koopa keep also known as the KKK and the KKK has been fighting against Kyle's and Stan's drow elves for almost an eternity, plus or minus one eternity, and it is your job to protect the stick of truth. Now, everything was going nice and fine and dandy until the elves attack when you come, and all of a sudden, Clyde had one job. It's God. What? The stick of truth. The elves got it. That was your one goddamn job, Clyde! To guard the stick of fucking truth! Like any RPG, South Park The Stick of Truth lets you create your own character. Unfortunately, the initial character creation is a little lackluster. There isn't too much variation in what you can do. However, when you play the game, you can get more flair on your character. And so the very limited amount of options at the beginning isn't really that much of a problem. However, you're not going to be seeing that much because once you start getting all your armor on, you're not going to really notice the flare because you're going to just see your kid wearing all armor. However, one such noticeable piece of flare that is very, very vital and very important that you get is, pos is personally my favorite, the Hasselhoff. You need to get the Hasselhoff. It just makes the game so much better. Oh, that looks nice. Big improvement. Come back if you ever need any more work done. Hey, I wish I could get some rhinoplasty too. One of the aspects of this game is that it's a satire on RPGs in general. So pretty much all the customization stuff really doesn't matter, especially once you decide you wanna what you want to name your character, as you have very little control in what actually you are named. You entered Douchebag, is that correct? Are you sure you want to keep the name Douchebag? Very well, Douchebag! You're given the choice of four classes, Mage, Fighter, Thief, or Jew. Now, the classes, I find there really wasn't too much variation unless you go full out to roleplay that class, because really, in the end, I played through the game originally on uh, playing as a Jew, and I just ended up using melee attacks and armoring up at the end because that was the most efficient way I found to play the game. Now, comparing whatever your playstyle is, that might be different for you, but you have to go all out and you really have to get into it if you want to have any sort of variation. Now, within the game, you'll have all your regular RPG stuff. You'll have fast travel stations, which are pretty awesome because they're manned by Tama. <laughs> There are many side quests to complete. One of my favorite ones is when you have to go to the church and you have to find Jesus. Tee hee hee hee. You found me! Tee hee hee! Next time finding me won't be so easy! And it is also very addictive to try to find all the friends and catch all 30 Trimprokomon. And I swear to God, I will find you, Shu. 
I don't know where you are, but I will find you, Shu, and I will kill you. Someday I will collect all the Chim Pokemon, then I will fight the evil power that will reveal itself once all the Chim Pokemon are collected. Oh. The combat in the game is turn-based, and really the only difference you're going to see within the classes is their different abilities. However, the different abilities all seem to do kind of the same thing. You've got one that stuns, you've got one that does a bleed effect, you got one that um, knocks down armor, and you've got one that just does massive AoE damage. You know, they all seem to have these very basic principles about um, abilities and taking things down. Now, you also have a, compa a companion, and the companions are pretty much main characters from the show, which is actually pretty cool. You also have their abilities, and their abilities vary from character to character, and also it's very not difficult after a point. Once you start leveling up and once you get good enough gear, the combat seems to kind of ease up on you a little bit. What is cool about this game though, with the combat, is that since the kids are LARPing, everything is a real world item. So it's really ridiculous when you give yourself a health potion or a mana potion and the health potion is a, is a bag of cheesy puffs and the health and the uh, mana potions a burrito so yeah it's something to look forward to you have basically three main attacks you've got um, a range attack you've got a melee attack and then you have the dragon attacks which are magic attacks which are farts this game has a fart fetish it's actually kind of weird. In combat, you also have a summons ability. Now, the summons ability pretty much is a one-hit KO for everything. It ends the fight before it even starts, if you choose that way. But it can also get you out of a really sticky situation. And they are actually hilarious. Um, my favorite one would have to be Jesus again with his ability to just help you in the way he does so is kind of hilarious in every possible way. Lock and load. Ugh, screw this. Well, you're good at adventuring. Also, if you're very careful, you can actually avoid combat by using environmental hazards to knock out your enemies and you would actually save yourself the fight and you might even get a reward from doing that. So always look around the environment to see what you can hit. The main interface or UI once you get all your gear and stuff, it's kind of this, it's a really cool Facebook kind of parody where you have uh, all your friends and their little status updates and, you know, they say some kind of nonsensical things sometimes. Uh, sometimes they have really important mission information, but a lot of times it's a lot of gibberish. Um, and it really is streamlined for use of the controller. It makes it seem like the game was definitely designed for console. Now, I played on the PC. I played through the game on PC. I played about 12 hours on the PC, the, my first playthrough. And I didn't use the mouse and keyboard because those controls felt a little awkward for me. So you might want to consider that if you're playing on the PC or if you have a PC or and a 360 or a PS3 and you're thinking maybe you want to get it for the console instead of the PC, you might want to go ahead and grab it for the console. The game ran on my PC at about 30 frames per second. It seemed to be locked at 30 frames per second. However, I really didn't notice it when I was playing until I turned my fraps counter on because it really didn't make that much of a difference because of the aesthetic of the South Park game. So really with this you don't need 60 frames per second. Yes there are some reflex times and there are quite a bit of bush and ma button mashing times that really need you to be on your toes but you don't really get hindered from the lower frame rate. Six, uh, this game at 60 frames per second probably wouldn't look as good as it does and it's that real South Park feel that really just needs to be there for this to be a South Park game. To conclude, this is a good game. It's a really fun RPG. I wasn't expecting it. I thought it was going to be just kind of a crappy TV show kind of mashup with a video game. I thought it was going to be kind of half-assed. You know, the game was delayed so much and then it 
finally came out, and you know, you never really hype a game. I don't pre-order games until I see reviews, and I decided, hey, I'm going to take a risk with this one. I really didn't have $60 to just kind of blow away, and I'm really glad that I picked up South Park The Stick of Truth. It took me 12 hours to complete one playthrough, but I did not collect all the Chimp Pokemon or friends. So, if you want to actually have a pretty good time sync, you know, the replayability definitely varies from person to person. If you really want to get all the things and play as all the classes, go ahead. It's really fun. But, you know, there's also, I do recognize that since the variety isn't that much, you know, you might not want to buy it at $60. So I do still recommend, this is one of the games I say is a must play for people that like RPGs and like South Park because it definitely feels like a South Park RPG. You do make so much of a difference when you play it. It actually feels like you, the new kid, Sir Douchebag. You are the man. You are the protagonist. You are one of the kids. And once you get to the ending and the really, really just tw really odd twist that they put on it and the final boss fight and then at the very end it makes you feel so satisfied and I was laughing so much through this game it's it's a must play I, I would say it's a must play if you don't have $60 wait for it on Steam sale go pick up a used copy once it gets a little bit lower but definitely try to play this game if you can it is so fun Sorry. You'll get your best shot, and that's all Jesus asks of you. 